Hello, my name is Yvette Benavides Garcia. I am the daughter of Roy P. Benavides, Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you today on behalf of my late father. Not a day goes by that our family is not reminded or remembered of my father and the legacy that he left behind. As you know, my father was a military man. He was in the Army and he lived and breathed duty, honor, country. At a very early age, my father was orphaned and forced to live with an uncle of his who already had 10 children of his own. So at a very early age, my father had to learn to cope and deal with tragedy. Um, he, was, um, he lived with my uncle and also at a very young age, he joined the military. So um, I believe he joined when he was 17 and lied about his age. Um, but he, nonetheless, he did join the military, and um, later on, uh, he did two tours in Vietnam. The second tour of, in Vietnam that he did is known as the Six Hours in Hell, and is the tour that ultimately earned him the Congressional Medal of Honor. When um, he did do the Six Hours in Hell, many of you have read about the encounter that happened during those six hours, but my father was asked or not asked, he actually volunteered to join a group to retrieve classified documents that were being held um, by Leroy Wright, who was dead actually at the time. And so my father knew Leroy Wright and knew of the mission that he had been on. And when he found out or had heard that he was dead, he knew that he needed to go on that mission to help retrieve the classified documents. So my father voluntarily joined that mission and boarded a helicopter to retrieve the documents. Immediately when he um, got off the helicopter, he was hit by enemy fire. He was clubbed, bayoneted, stabbed at, shot at. He um, stepped on hand on grenades. The mortars uh, flew into his body. The shrapnel flew into his body. And um, my father ultimately had about over 38 wounds to his hands, face, feet, body, buttocks. Um, when he was finally dragged onto the chopper at the end of the mission after having retrieved the classified documents They thought that my father was dead actually because of all the wounds that he had received um, His intestines were indeed hanging out as stories have indicated and uh, He was thought of as being dead. So they put him in the pile of the dead um, I remember hearing stories growing up. My father wouldn't talk much about his um, life in the military or from anything that happened when he was in Vietnam. Um, I think it was very painful for him to relive, but he would talk about uh, sometimes uh, the issue with the body bag because he ultimately, that's how he almost died. Um, not from the wounds of war, but um, from being suffocated to death in a body bag. And so I remember him saying that he didn't want to die that way and he was trying to muster up enough strength to let the doctor know somehow, some way that he was indeed still alive. And by the grace of God and through a lot of praying, he was able to muster up enough strength to spit into the face of the doctor who was uh, zipping him up. So that is how my father ultimately survived the six hours in hell, was by spitting in a doctor's face to let them know that he was alive and not dead. He was then put with the um, pile of the living and uh, taken to an area hospital. It took my father about nine months to recuperate from those injuries that he sustained in the Vietnam War. And um, on the ninth month when he got out, I was conceived. And so I am um, very proud to say that I am the result of uh, nine months uh, after he um, was um recuperating. Um, I was born then nine months after the fact. So 18 months after his tour in Vietnam, I was born. And I really had not understood the importance of that until recently, by the way. Um, I was sitting down and I was watching, I'm a school teacher, and I was watching a video um, on gaggle tube and I was showing my students, and I remember talking to a fellow teacher who, she was talking to me about my father and his dedication and how honored she was and her husband was of my father. 
And I remember going back and sitting down and it like hit me all of a sudden that, oh my gosh, I was actually conceived nine months to the day after he got out of the hospital. And then I was born eight, nine months later, so 18 months after the fact. And it really hit me that, um, you know, I think everybody in life has a purpose. And up until that point, I really didn't know what my purpose was. And since then, I have come to realize that I do have a purpose in life and that my father was meant to live through those injuries of, of the Vietnam War. And therefore, I was, um, ex you know, I, I, was, I was meant to live as well. I was meant to be born and to carry on a message um, that my father has so tried to instill in a lot of people, um, the message of um, hope and the message of getting through life no matter what you're going through and the message of duty, honor, and country. My father lived and breathed that and to his death was very, had a very enormous love for his country. So for you men and women who are out there and who are giving up your todays for our tomorrows, um, we, the Benavides family, truly appreciate all that you have to offer our country. It takes a special person, I believe, to join the military and to give up all that you have to give up in order for our freedom. And so um, we truly do appreciate all the sacrifices that you men and women make on a daily basis. And so um, we applaud you and we thank you for your deed, for your heroic deeds, and for your service to our country. My father, growing up, um, he had to um, deal with a lot of prejudice in life and um, it was just the time era that he had to deal with. But even after his uh, military life, after he retired, he still had to deal with a lot of prejudice. And, the, and I call it prejudice, but more importantly, it's probably a lot of ignorance that he had to deal with. But um, my father had obviously injuries from the war and there were some days when he couldn't wake up or get out of bed actually um, because his body was so tight and stiffened the muscles. And so it was a struggle. Each and every day that he lived his life, it was a struggle. And um, some people criticized him for that because he was considered 100% disabled from the military. A lot of people criticized him, even in our hometown. Um, my father would muster up enough strength every morning to get up and go walk five miles. And um, he would be in a lot of pain most of those days, but he did it in order to keep his body moving and functioning and to get those muscles working. And a lot of people believe that because my father was 100% disabled, that he probably should have been bedridden, homebound, in a wheelchair. And that just wasn't my father. So no matter you know what label they put on him, 100% disabled, that wasn't meant that he wasn't not able to do anything. And so, my father received a lot of criticism from people saying, well, I don't understand why he can get up every morning and walk when he's 100% disabled. And so that's, you know, a lot of ignorance played into uh, effect when my father came back and um, was retired from the military. And even to this day in this world, we still have a lot of people that have a lot of um, ignorance or hatred from people who came back from Vietnam. And, and that's unfortunate that we have to live in a life like that, but we do. Um, I know if my father were alive today, he would still be talking to groups, um, to um, educational facilities, to civic organizations. He would still be making his rounds because um, that's what he was uh, meant to do after he received his medal. He really didn't think a lot of people would remember him um, a year after he received his medal. In fact, I remember him sitting down after he received um, his medal in Washington, President Reagan had asked him if he would not mind devoting one year of his life to traveling the world and talking to um, schools and trying to get people to stay in school, to stay off the of drugs, to stay out of gangs, and to pursue their education. And I remember my father sitting us down one evening and saying, President Reagan has asked me to do this, and I'm and I'm going to do it. And so, um, you know, there might be some weeks where I'm gone for four days out of the week or five days, but, you know, I'll be back for the weekends and this, that, and the other. And I remember, 
thinking, okay, it's only going to be for a year. And my father truly believed that. He said, trust me, after a year, people are going to forget about me. And they never did. They never forgot about him. And that was back in 1981 when he received the medal. And um, to this day, my father's influence and my father's legacy is still being seen and radiated throughout this world. And he truly is an American icon. Um, and, and I believe that that's part of my mission in life and why I was meant to, to live in this world was to help my father continue his message um, to young kids to, you know, stay out of gangs, to stay off of drugs, to continue your education. It doesn't matter what economic background you come from or if you're growing up socioeconomic with a disadvantage or if you're growing up with one parent or from a, a broken household or if you're broken, if you're growing up being abused or bullied, it really, in the grand scheme of things, those are things that we have to deal with on a daily basis, but you can get through life and you can become something. By all accounts, you know, when my father was growing up, he had so many um, darts being thrown against him and he survived every single dart that was through, that was being thrown to him and he was able to live through all of his grief and all of his pain and all of his wounds, quote unquote, and he was able to become something in this world. And even 13 years after his passage, he is still motivating people and encouraging people through me, through his family, through his other speeches that can be seen um, on videos throughout the world. He is still motivating and encouraging people. So if there's one thing that I would want you to walk away from is that, trust me, you know, we all deal with uh, fears and anxieties and worries. That's just human nature. That's just a part of our, our makeup. I don't think anybody is immune to that. And my father surely wasn't. I'm not anybody in this world. Um, if there's anything that you walk away from is that um, think about my father and everything that he stood for and everything that he encountered in life. And trust me, if my father can live through it and beat it and deal with it, then surely we can. Nothing is so great in this world that we truly can't overcome it. And I'm reminded of that on a daily basis. Um, and I draw strength from the faith that he has instilled in us. Um, my father was a very faithful and devoted Catholic. And even in his darkest moments and time of need, he would still stop by and visit our church. Uh, our church has an open door policy where you know you can go in at all hours of the night. Um, it, it's, the doors are never closed or locked. And my father could be seen parked in front of the church and just stopping and praying. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's things like that that I'm reminded of. And whenever I'm having a bad moment or a bad day, like I said, we all go through it. I'm always reminded of everything that my father endured in life. And I'm reminded that um, nothing is too great of a challenge or a fear or a belief that I can't handle through the strength of my faith. So um, I, I like to thank you for allowing me this opportunity to talk to you. And I truly hope that you grow from this uh, speech that I've given and that you can walk away from um, today and be a better person, be a better military man or woman, be a better father, be a better husband, a mother, a brother, a sister, just being a better person because we're all in this world together and um, that's truly what life is about is being the best that you can be and I know my father tried to instill that in everybody that he came across on a daily basis. So thank you.